Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thornton. In today's video, I want to talk about masculine and femininity. So, masculinity and uh, the idea of uh, the male personality or the female personality. So, first of all, before I get this started, I just want to say thanks everyone for helping me reach this milestone of 10,000 subscribers. I'm so glad to hear there's 10,000 people out there that want to find out about my next videos, to want to stay updated with my life, to want to hear what's going on, you know. That means so much to me and yeah, I could not have imagined this happening so quickly or things to grow that fast. I never thought that was gonna happen. I never thought it would happen so quickly. So thanks so much for this. Okay, so masculinity and femininity. For me, it's pretty simple actually. Masculinity is confidence. Femininity is self-esteem. So for feminine types or for people who are thinking about their femininity, what you're really doing is you're thinking about your sense of self-worth. Am I a worthwhile person? Am I valuable? Am I desirable? Am I attractive? Am I a good person? Am I uh, like it has to do with that sense of goodness and inner goodness and inner value. Where masculinity, that really bottles down to your sense of capability. Are you, and do you consider yourself able? Are you able to do things? Are you able to start up projects? Are you able to finish things? Are you able to overcome obstacles? When challenged, are you able to push through? Do you believe in yourself and your ability to accomplish something or to hit a goal? Or do you question yourself or give up easily or struggle with uh, lower confidence? So here the thing is, you can have a high confidence while lacking self-worth. You can have a high self-worth while lacking in confidence. Equally is possible. And when you think about it, often in movies and in fiction, feminine characters, female characters are often drawn to learn to develop their sense of self-worth or attractiveness or goodness. They are, they learn of their own inner beauty or their own intelligence or their own goodness where men or masculine characters uh, learn of their abilities and their strengths and what they are capable of and they learn to develop their confidence so any type uh, any person can and has to deal with these things in themselves so the Jungian idea is uh, men are supposed to have uh, a masculine self and uh, a repressed or unconscious feminine self while women are supposed to have a dominant or a strong pronounced feminine identity and a strong repressed masculine identity i don't know if that's true the thing i do believe is uh, that for a man you are often confronted on your masculinity more often while as a woman you are more likely to be confronted and questioned on your self-worth so what's going to happen is as a guy you're gonna be asked and valued and measured by your ability to see true goals and your ability to stand up to challenges and to be strong in the face of adversity you're gonna be questioned on your abilities can you get the uh, women can you get uh, accomplishments can you get a high salary can you become popular can you accomplish a lot at school or in can you get the goal in in soccer you know like that ability to achieve something is uh, something people your friends and your family and your teachers they're all gonna be asking this of you like no matter if you like it or not they're gonna ask this for you and uh, as a girl it's always gonna be like uh, that question of uh, inner beauty and inner value when Jung talked about femininity and masculinity, he borrowed a lot on, you know, that metaphor of Tarzan and Jane. So what he was talking about was, you know, the primitive masculinity versus the primitive femininity. So his idea of the most primitive masculine idea was that of uh, basically a Tarzan-like figure, a wild primitive person who uh, could barely talk or communicate, that could, uh, like... Uh, that was strong but uh, brutish in strength and that uh, to some extent you know lacked the uh, 
refinement and then he graduated slowly towards that of a civilized masculinity so in young saw people as going from you know that being that tarzan like figure to becoming like a well dressed well behaved articulate man wearing a hat you know like they did in his times uh, he saw people going that direction and that was what he saw as civilized masculinity or developed masculinity where for femininity what he saw was uh, the most primitive idea of the feminine person was that of the damsel in distress or the helpless lady or this archetype of this person who had no abilities no strengths no power of their own uh, that person that was defenseless and sometimes naive or gullible or so on and you know that woman she had to develop her femininity and she had to grow and you know she had to develop herself and in doing that what she was doing was she was becoming you know the civilized feminine and that was the archetype of uh, basically a greek goddess of um, aphrodite or freya or uh, okay freya is norse mythology but basically that of the competent strong woman you know the superwoman <laughs> in a sense so basically saw us of dealing with and managing this within ourselves so the idea you can also make from this is that men by a curse they are always confronted on questions of their confidence they miss to work on their self-esteem so you know what men think is okay if i just do a lot and i achieve a lot and i uh, complete a lot of projects and i set hard goals for myself and push myself i'm gonna get a sense of self-worth and value no that's not usually what happens what usually happens is no matter how much you do you start feeling like you're constantly just getting more and more insecure you're starting to feel like nobody loves you nobody cares about you nobody listens to you nobody wants to hear you out so you start feeling more and more like your self-worth is crippled so your femininity your inner feminine aspects or your self-worth that becomes crippled where if you're constantly just developing your self-worth like your self-respect like i'm um, your sense of who you are and your sense of what is good about you you can sometimes get stuck in a comfort zone in the sense of uh, not challenging yourself appropriately and hindering yourself from achieving goals. So there can be a fear of starting up projects, of setting challenges, of doing things, and there can be a tendency to dismiss this. Uh, when you have a strongly developed self-worth with no confidence, it will be that you believe in your value, but you fear and you don't believe in yourself and your ability. So you don't believe you can succeed, you don't believe you will be capable, you don't believe that you will like, be able to achieve this project or get out of this situation. So in that there is um, a tendency to become overly reliant on the help of others. So often what uh, guys need to work on or people with an overly developed masculinity or masculine identity is they have to learn to ask for help, they have to learn to let other people take the first initiative once in a while and they have to learn to work on their sense of self-worth like if you don't work on your sense of self-worth eventually it's gonna take over you and you're gonna have like these insecure lash outs uh, where you basically talk about why does nobody like me why does nobody care about me why do girls hate me you know why, why am i always putting the friends on you know you get into the, these uh, crisis as of self-worth if you don't deal deal and work with your self-worth and you know what you're doing you're working on your self-respect so you're working on that ability to appreciate yourself for your own sake and for your own worth and it has to do with working on yourself and working on uh, your body working on your mind working on your harmony your emotional state there has been like an idea like uh, when you study gender sciences uh, i studied the course in gender sciences in Uppsala university uh, that uh, often men are accused of uh, making women their source of emotional healing like um, men pursuing women out of a need for healing and for restoring the harmony that uh, restoring the harmony and dealing with the disharmony that they have often brought upon themselves you know by their own actions and their lifestyle so there can be a tendency to 
uh, ter make women responsible for your emotional value and your self worth. We have like this idea sometimes in society that though women are responsible for giving me a sense of self worth, and uh, where men are supposed to be responsible for giving you a sense of self confidence. You know, <laughs> while I can appreciate the sentiment of asking other people for help or for lending other pow people's power and uh, surfing on other people's strengths and working together that need and that uh, feeling like y you depend on the other person and that you need them that can also drive a lot of frustration like why don't they give it to me I need it so that's something we have to confront with ourselves so when it comes to the Myers-Briggs type indicator and when it comes to masculinity and femininity there's a lot of associations you know like I think uh, the masculine ideal is the extroverted sensing thinking and judging type that's the ideal man you know that's the archetypal masculine almost uh, there's this connotation towards extroversion as something masculine because it's out there it's go it goes and gets things it takes things by the horns you know it lives in the real world and then it's sensing it's practical it goes straight for what it wants it does not take any ways around it it's can focus on the tangible, the concrete, and what the practical. It's handy, it's good with tools, it's good with all those things we need to survive and to live practical lives. Thinking, it's logical, it's rational. Judging, it's goal-oriented, it's organized, it's disciplined. So all those things tend to drive us to think of ESTJs as the most masculine of all and INFPs as the most feminine of all. And that's also why there's like in society perhaps uh, a tendency to bash the INFP and their sensitivities and uh, their tendency to live outside of the real world in the twilight zone to go and to feel a need to know coach INFP men towards being more masculine and towards reclaiming their ESTJ self, you know, and the masculine identity. Like, there is this idea, and it's extremely harmful. The way I see it, it has nothing to do with MTI type. Masculinity and femininity has nothing to do with, mascul uh, with uh, masculine identity. So, you can be equally masculine as an INFP male as you can be as an ESTJ male. You just have to let go of those cultural stereotypes around masculinity. Because masculinity has no true shape or form like I said in the beginning of this video it's just confidence it's really just confidence so what's INFP confidence what's male INFP confidence that that's believing in your sensitivity and that's believing that your inner dream world can help you achieve your goals that the theories you come about the introspection that you are and the self-learning project that you are on will give you a strong sense of identity and a power to stand up to the world and you know to show people who you are and to express yourself and it will give you the ability to see things that other people cannot see literally to be able to understand the whole matrix the whole world the bigger picture so as an INFP you can be if you are confident very strong in your own masculine identity and a lot of INFPs I met have very strong masculine identities in the sense that yeah they don't feel blocked they don't feel hindered they don't feel stuck Equally, you'll come across ESTJ women and uh, ESTJs with a strong sense of femininity and worth. So that just uh, means knowing who you are and knowing your power and knowing your strength. It means uh, being able to, you know, live in the moment, to take every experience as it comes, to feel good about where you are and about your environment and about your situation and to create a good environment around you and to come onto a place of comfort. So what the, what can happen of course in all of this is yeah there is a tendency to mistype the masculine or masculine people as being more extroverted than they are, more sensing than they are, more thinking than they are. Just as there is a tendency to mistype uh, women as feelers, and I think the MTI is very much subject to this error. They make a lot of statistics, and a lot of these statistics are bull because they mistype feelers, uh, women as feelers, when in fact many of these women are just thinkers that have developed feeling 
or culturally feeling strategies. So what we need to do is, of course, yeah, challenge our ideas of masculine and feminine and also where they belong and also how we should respond to these things within ourselves. Challenge the cultural stereotypes revolving around masculinity and femininity and also think about what it means to ourselves because, you know, there's uh, those that study gender sciences, they recognize that there are extremely nuanced norms regarding masculinity and femininity. There are literally thousands of masculine identities that are completely different from one another and there are literally thousands of feminine identities that are literally different from one another so really when you're getting down to it in a nutshell femininity and uh, if you're working on your self-worth and if you're learning to accept yourself just the way you are and if you're looking to feel beautiful and feel good and feel intelligent and feel like a good person then you're working on your femininity. And if you're working on becoming better at starting up projects, at completing goals, at overcoming obstacles, then you're working on your masculinity. That's as simple as it is. Feel free to tell me in the comments down below what you're currently dealing with and what you're currently working on and how you feel about your own femininity or masculinity. Tell me about the stereotypes and how they hit against your type. What is it like to be, for example, an INTP lady? What is it like to be for example, an INFP man. Share it in the comments down below. Thanks everyone for joining up in today's video and I hope to see you all in my next video.